All right, Blues, and welcome back to part two of our season preview. If you haven't seen part one, go and check that out. The link will be somewhere on the screen now and in the description below. I'm joined by Martin and Walter again, the two men with the hair. And in uh, this part, we're going to be talking about the squad going into the season. And starting with a question from uh, Joe Madden 5000 on Twitter. What will be our best defensive partnership this year? Two centre-halves. Two centre-halves. <laughs> For me, in an ideal world, when everybody's completely 100% fit, <laughs> My mind would be um, Vincent Company, and I would love Jason Denea, personally. Um, realistically, more realistically, I think that he may go with um, Company and Mangala from the off against West Brom, if I'm honest. And I just mm -hmm. hope that Vinny kind of hits the ground running. It, you know, there's a lot being said. He's not he's not recovered 100% from injuries in recent times. We all want him as City fans to be, you know, Mr. Invincible that he is. Mm -hmm. We're desperate for that as a club as well. I suppose that's the worry, isn't it? Because he's club captain. Yeah. If he gets dropped for the West Brom game, it, it all gets a bit weird with company then, doesn't it? Because mm. his head's going to go. He just needs a, like a clean sheet or something, like a big tackle or I don't know. Well, the thing is with company is we've all seen how good he can be, you know what I mean? He was touted as arguably the best centre-half in the world he at one point. He was for a while, wasn't he? Um, I, I look at company, he's not had a break for years because he had the World mm. Cup and stuff. And this summer, he's actually had a break in certain respects. Until and his wife had a baby. Well, I was just about to say that Carl as a father. I, I absolutely appreciate <laughs> how knackered one can be. Yeah. Um, just emotionally draining and physically draining. And to try and perform as a top athlete on a pre season, you, you are going to struggle. Uh, I'm hoping company can find that form because I was watching the videos and stuff over him, you know, on the runner, and you can see him get. He He's a fine it. specimen of a man, he you know what I mean? Though, he, he does he want really it. He really wants it. And to get there. Well, in many respects, Zim and Zabba are two Mr. Cities. Yeah. yeah. And the two I'd like, I would like. Um, I love Baywatch Martin, me. Yeah. But uh, Martin Dimichaelis. And I think I'm going to go with Denea and um, Company. Because I always think Mangala, when he's there with. Martin D. Michaelis, he looks a far more solid player. Yeah. Yeah. And why, I have no idea. Yeah. Any I, clues? I, 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 I wonder if it's that Company and Mangala are the same player. I, to, to be honest with you, remember when we played Chelsea last season yeah. and they bullied Costa? They absolutely smashed yeah. it. Mangala's <laughs> first game, he was knocked yeah, out of the game. He tried that, yeah. to. I mean, Costa got up on a couple of occasions to front someone up. He hit Company and then he fronted up Mangala and then he went quiet in the game yeah. until he got Zab sent off. <laughs> But, you know, f for me, the, the bottom line, I think Martin De Michaelis, he almost pleases Mangala better than Company. Company yeah. has his blinkers on his own game. Yeah. And well, I think with Denea being a, a sort of been nurtured by Company so far, yes. you feel that yeah. that connection might help. That's the thing, isn't it? Company's our captain, mm. and De Michaelis was the one who could run Mangala better because yeah. Company's so out of form. Yeah. He's more bothered about. No offence to him, he's more bothered about his own game because he needs to get that right. But Do you ever think he may be trying too hard? Yes, always. Yeah. And that's, <coughs> that's my worry for him. The only thing is, and it's just the nature of modern day football is, everybody needs to hit the ground running. Yes. And with the way the press are, they start whipping up a campaign, supporters get on people's backs, and a company, need, I mean, we all love him and we all want the best for him, which means playing well for City, which is the best for us. So he's under the most pressure, isn't he? Because he's okay. as captain. Yeah. But the the other thing is, someone said on Twitter or in the comments, "What about Demichelis? He was our best defender last season by yeah. a mile, and we're not yeah. really considering him, which is it seems odd." But yeah. But do we need to? He's he's getting no younger. Do we need to start nurturing Mangala and den deny it before? I, I think Demichelis he, he reads the game. He absolutely yeah. reads the game. We saw it, where he came into his own was that game against Hull when oh, Vinny yeah. got sent yeah, off, and then suddenly yeah, he pleased yeah. everything. And every every attack all had was offside because Demichelis. Well, the whole forwards yeah. was partly to blame, but he pleased the defence. I don't know if Vinny leads that line. He leads from the front. You know, yeah. he really is your, your flagship bearer. Uh, as club captain, but ultimately Martin De Michaelis as, a, as an actual outright uh, centre half reads the game for me better than company. Yeah. That's more natural I on think that what side. The easiest way to sum that up is um, oh, company leads by example mm. yeah. and he'll get stuck in and he'll almost like a warrior. 
while Dean Michaelis is like the thoughtful old wizard at the back, yes. yeah. you know, yeah. mopping everything up, marshalling everything around him. But the problem with Dean Michaelis is, and it could happen any time, his legs are going to go. Yeah. And that's the reason you were talking about Denea and you were talking yeah. about Mangala and bringing them through. Uh, do, you, do you think well, there's an argument, though, like under Mancini, that we were a much more of a defensive team to some yes, extent, yeah. and there was there was more protection in front of that back four. Oh, God, so yeah. all I'm sort of saying is, whilst companies come under the spotlight, and I understand why, and we all understand why, but that policing of that role, the old Nigel De Jong used to sort of play. Yeah. You know, does Fernando really play that role? Does Yaya Torre want to play that role? It seems to me that role has gone missing, so it's exposed the defence a little bit more. So. I don't know, part of me at times thinks with Sterling coming in and much more of attacking front three, do we not have that yeah, sort of that one player. in front of the defence? That yeah, well, Claude Macaulay, for want of a better phrase. Delph. That brings on nicely to the midfield. Um, I imagine we're going to play three in midfield this year because the 4-4-2 seems mm. out. Anyway, let us know in the comments below. We can't decide a uh, centre-half pairing, so you're going to have to do it for us. <laughs> That's true. Um, are we going to go with a three? <clears throat> I imagine we will. At the moment, we don't have three. Mm. Um, and what will they be? Will Delph play the role that we've missed? I, I've, when we signed him, I thought, is he going to be our Barry? Is he going to be the Milner where the signing will go very unnoticed and very dismissed? And then in two years, three years' time, he'll go, that was all Delph. Yeah, I, I believe so. I mean, the thing is with Barry is, Barry, he had, um, would never drop for England. Yes. Do you know what I mean? He was always chucks. He, he was absolute quality. And we got rid of him just at the right time. His yeah. legs were starting to go, and he was a great servant for us, and we won the, the league with him. Now, Delph is, for me, a younger version. He's getting the England caps in, and I think he'll improve as a player and at City because he's working with, you know, arguably better players. Better play well, not arguably better yeah. players, Definitely. better players. Yeah. He's working with a better manager as well. Um, so I think. With Delph, Delph for me would be the pin in front, and I'd also think about you've got Fernando there as well, and I think Fernando played a lot of last season injured. Yeah, well that's the thing people have been saying was Fernando just sort of cast aside because he was injured or whatever. But then you got Fernandinho who's been brilliant for us when he's fit. So yeah. who who partners Yaya in the middle? Is it Fernandinho? Is it it's, it's, for me? It's, yeah. it's relatively interesting because you had certain phases of last season where we had to test the full strength of the squad. Roma away, for yeah. example, you know the idea that Fernando and Fernandinho commentators nightmare to some extent, <laughs> but they, they kind of police that Sounds midfield. Sounds like an <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But they they police that midfield and they did the job we needed them to. You know, one dif one goes, one sits, one goes, one sits. You know, anyone who's played even Sunday league football would know that. Yeah. And, you, and you kind of there was an understanding there. Yaya is going to be, you know, we talked a little bit in in part one about. Delph and Sterling wanting to prove themselves. Yaya's going to want to prove himself. He's talked a lot he's in this prison, well yeah, pre and he's hungry for it. So, if Yaya Torre is a nailed-on name on that team sheet yeah. all the time, yeah. then ultimately it depends on the partners that go with him. But, um, but I think, like Walter says, I think Delph will be quite a pivotal player. Yeah. Gives I, him the opportunity I to kick on. Like you said as well, um, if we've got a back two that we're uncertain of, mm. if we've got three in front, surely we're more secure. Yeah. But then. That leaves us with three going forward. I think David Silver's first name on the team sheet. I don't think there's any issue where, where there. Would you, where's Sil Silver in the centre? I Well, it's three. weird, isn't it? If It's a weird one because if we're playing three in the middle, Silver's going to end up out wide because of Sterling. And we don't have a winger to go... Or if we put two in the middle, you can have two wingers, Silver in the middle and Aguero. It's, I think it's if you look at the, if modern day football, if you look at the, the best team in the world, it, the attacking team, they've got the three boys the up front, and the, the Barcelona they, boys, yeah. and I think Sterling, I mean, we haven't got the players to match that, yeah. but the philosophy and the ideas there, mm. and what I think is, if you've got them three up front, mm. I think they can absolutely re wreak havoc, yeah. and S Sterling, Silva and Aguero are going to score a bucket load of well, goals. That's the thing as well, isn't it? If we've got those three behind them, yeah. they don't need to defend anymore. No. And how that would be like your argument, and your argument would be in an ideal world for me personally is that two of that midfield sit yeah, and therefore Andino protect and the, 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 the actual defence, and therefore we take some of the heat out of this 
you know, Vincent Company having to come in in front of the attacker yeah, all the time. Yeah. He's got to adapt his game. I think everybody understands that, and I'm sure he does as well. But ultimately, that sounds the right move for me, 4-3-3, and ultimately with two sitting, and then that silver roll is potentially there. Well, it sounds like a, a recipe for disaster for defenders anyway. But that was part two <laughs> of our season preview. We've discussed the squad. Let us know in the comments below what would your starting eleven be for this season. And uh, don't forget to check out part three, which will be looking more at the season as a whole with some predictions. This is Ricky the Hitman Hatton. Subscribe to Blue Moon Rising TV.